talk about the way in which, you know, remanding people in custody, the questioning before, let's say, the authorities, like those exploitationists or the media sources. What does that mean in a world where faith-driven or, or tolerable to just constantly exploit to the point where you just bury yourself alive in, in um, mystified, the, you know, in, in mysticism? Where you understand, like, you know, things like murder mystery novelists. How do you tolerate things like murder mystery novelists or romance novelists? Or understand that there's still fairy tale lifestyle still being seen as the way in which was never solved, but the world must have. Household to household. You know, product to product. You all deserve to be a princess stricken with mice only to have the perfect golden sl slipper fit perfectly on your foot for the sake of a prince that only shows up with a pumpkin pie as a way as a beautiful um, culinary option even in your 40s and 50s right in a, in a wholesome home a home of ho wholesome age and, and you know enough no royal family or no no real you know major um familiar familiarity through influence or you know ownership or, or elder statesmanship families all that influence you know could could ever sort of keep itself ahead of the rest if it meant that all it meant was constantly the world wasn't being safeguarded even against intergalactical attack from the outside universe we all have to play our part in the way in which we even make them proud and i think that's really really enlightening to know it's very refreshing to know that we should always be looking to you know to dazzle one another we should you know to make people proud that every effort in which to make the world a safer and more tolerable place is sort of is at some at pace with with help not just maintaining it but adding that little something characteristically that helps shape the world, but at the same time, doesn't hurt it. it. It doesn't. It doesn't damage. It doesn't damage it. There's a fabricated sense of cultural dependency these days that even overrides the foundational security of cultural development or or, or cultural beauty. You can't refer to culture by referring to color. And this is where cultures become so beautiful, is because cultures need to be proud of who they are. It wouldn't matter if it's colour, but a lot of cases, culture doesn't relate to colour, period. The diversity of mankind through human genetics is no different than seeing one continent dominated by some colour or life form, or, or you know, human in opposed to another one. The whole world is sort of diverse in feature and colour and code and practice and custom and everything. Just like mobs themselves or families in continents that even through countries and, and whatnot, tribes and everything, they are so diverse that they would see diversity as a more peak area of scholastic and social enterprise to that of what we might like to call university or a specific brand of of expertise or specialist field of, of mastery and degree. To be it compulsory that people should know. Well, why do, why do the cultures constantly have to suffer? Because I'll tell you why, not even cultures are fit to hear it. Cultures don't even have friggin' faith. They don't even tolerate it. And they, they become basically, literally, they become faggoted, and I mean brain fag on the issue. They become really, really sort of fucking idiotic. There's an idiosynchronism at stake, idiosyncrasy, that makes people sort of crawl back into a hole. Where if they sort of make one tiny move, like little characteristic, little tiny change, they tend to damage it rather than the people to see it as just something to fucking shrug off or bump or to roll with it. Better to hear it than not hear it. 
or better to sort of to hear it from the right person knowing that, you know, the propensity level of that person wouldn't actually fucking hurt a fly, but to say it, well, better to hear it from someone, it's no different than hearing it from your minister, or no different than hearing it from a, a elder, or no different hearing it from the goddamn arch nemesis of your mind, which becomes the actual tolerance. You've got to be able to see it before it gets there. So you can't have faith in the fact that that becomes the, the, the ultimate game changer. That's where the media sources, they, they, and people like that, the questioning quality of those, those custodial strengths. To put it into the public perspective, and you wonder why the cultures are seen as an absolute erratic rat race of malignancy. It's malignant. It's become so stagnant that not even the friggin' politics can can outweigh the humanitarian aspect anymore. Because it ultimately, supposedly, at the heart of all the multifaceted power and strength of even government or military is that of, in fact, humanitarian as humanitarianism which is ultimately always seen as an objective cosmopolitan arrogantism to see fit to inject your role and, and, and privilege to help and to assess and to, and to help through effort and strength and, and pliable you know, uh, uh, resource and, you know, anywhere you can to maintain the stability and strength of especially culture so that cultures can survive too. The world loves character. People love characteristics. People love individual characters, great and small, unique and, and, and bland or whatever. Unique and boring or unique and, and average or unique and ordinary or something, I don't know, unique and goddamn mediocre. Abjectivity through an unmarked loss or a chalked up loss. What do you think that is? That's like saying that if you fight for a foreign land, you will never have a home to go back to. If you're having to argue with a freaking feminist, and they haven't fucking marked the loss up yet or chalked up the loss. It's no different than having to say, well, sometimes you have to abjectfully get up, throw up and fucking leave those conversations. The simplicity of poverty's onslaught against concept always says that, well, you know, People don't even like people amongst their own culture. Well, women don't even like women. Some women just want to fucking scratch and punch the fucking eyes out of others. As much as women want to stand by the man and not ever see the sort of, you know, the debate of friggin' equality even sort of be seen as a half assed affair, not bring the best out of equality. Because yes, people want equality, but the world isn't even readily fit for it. Some countries aren't even ready for a republic, even though they're headed straight for one. Dispelled sequences that coincide with the outlay and like the faith be it the predetermining factor to what ultimately the, uh, what the outcome is. What is, it, what is it to understand high definition for the neurologically deaf? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that some kind of implant or some nebotomy? To ever say, you know, your surviving employees just aren't young enough to know it all. They're like low-budget gimmicks always surviving on a department or concession, even if the elder said that they can do it. You can't force people to do something they're not really assured to know, and you can't even expect the governing fathers. And there are a hell of a lot of most outstanding, impressive leaders today in their el mature elderly life today that would rather fucking get it over and done with now and to never see fit their inheritance be passed down to a generation to squander and completely fucking demoralize a world that they even fought for for 40 fucking years plus in power to all be just sort of, you know, just fucking washed away in a friggin' in, in a canter of where the whole world becomes again, like I'll freaking say it, a three a three legged egg and spoon race and a freaking potato sack trying to commit to a magic mile. 
a miracle mile. The world becomes a freaking three-legged egg and spoon race in a potato sack trying to complete a miracle mile or a magic mile marathon. It cannot be like that for them, for you or anyone. But the only way it can so that they can feel some reassurance is to know that, yeah, because society, the world changes. Through diversity, the world does change. But we need to know always that we don't fight for change. Let me echo this and highlight this so that you can actually bold cap it, italic it, um, semi, whatever the hell, underline it, just highlight it like footprints on the goddamn, you know, so that the glossary becomes the footprints on the front cover. That we don't fight for change. We fight to not change. We don't fight for change. You you need to know that we, we should never fight to change you need to fight not to change because the same way you say right that you don't need to be afraid of change you need to be afraid of not changing you need to be afraid of not changing so even as you change we don't fight for change we fight to not change That's what it is to just simply struggle through the ages. That's what it is to simply be able to... To be able to contest the quote, to contest the challenge, or to just basically see all challenge and to square up appropriately so as things change, the characteristics, we're just simply at pace with it so that we don't ever change. We fight not to change. You don't want to change who a country like these are, like mine is. You don't want to fight for a, for a different system than one that ever started itself on a, on a foundation like this. For even an empire like the British Empire to complete two goddamn bastions to get to this friggin' point. And not even friggin' know it all themselves. Countries are quick to jump on it. Or throw a bastion, or throw yourself into a goddamn children of the abyss affair. You can't be like, you know, living in a water bubble, trying to educate a friggin' water bubble. Or talk to a water bubble, only to go on to educate a tree stump with no one sitting on a tree stump. Where did the, where'd the tree go? And how did the utility, you know, how did the pro, how did the tree get used? You know, how did he cut into the wood? What are you doing with everything? Transaction not relating to finance and concession not relating to welfare. Saying, high definition for the neurologically deaf. High definition is not the power of sound resolution. About friggin' high resolution. Well, high definition is not the power of sound resolution. High definition for the neurologically deaf. Faith. Faith in what you hear. Tolerate. Really? What is that? A family fun parlor. For pre-existent survivalist concepts. For street beat managements or something. It's all corporate conscription, a reckless abandonment, highlighting the desperation. Highlighting simplicity of concept, dissolving the unnatural framework or the environment as a thickened foil or even a hazard. Where poverty, like the generic brand assault against authenticity, Generics brand assault against authenticity, referring to the identity or how we identify things, even authenticity versus authorization or authority itself. People, you know, it all goes down the same. Well, in any predominant fact uh, fashion, we commit the proceedings commenced against someone through a copyright distribution facility like Planet Earth or the factors that 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 warrant the world we, we, we mold into is like a conductor. This faith thing has to sort of only sort of become something like a heartfelt 
a heart factor, a heart decision. You can't, how does your, you say your echo, your, your cardiograph, your, your cardiolo, you know, the cardiograph, you know, the heart monitor, whatever the hell, understands how your heart beats. Some people, the only difference between man and woman is just the tiny little skip at the heartbeat. You know, it's like that when you fall in love or something. If you fall in love, you sort of step, it hits you like a stunt weapon. So, we don't want to deface public property like we don't want to sort of be turned over to a debased mind and forever become futile in our thoughts with our foolish hearts darkened, professing to be wise and only become foolish. We have to have more ingenuity at our greater control and never sort of at the same time pretend where the continual pathway for mankind is going to see us if we just sort of have faith that the whole world is peaches and cream and that all our Christmases are going to come at once if we don't see the bright side of, of, of fed, of, of discipline and instruction and being for being brought up in families that just literally know that like consequences, kids need to know just like adults, if you if you do this, you will see these results, you will see these outcomes. Having faith in the predetermined outcomes of law and order should have always been the case that saw people be totally indebted to the upkeep and maintenance of law, a lawful and orderly society. Never to see it with the friggin' capital cities every day, overrun by drugs and alcohol abuse and physical violence and harassment, to sees even the pledge of the departments and the emergency services, or even just basically the city council, having to do everything to basically constantly keep it at pace with that economic strength like the, the city itself. To just buddy, you know, give it a, a, a once over, a spruce up, get the cleaners out there, sweep up the spew and the spit and the blood and the wrappers and the and the and the rubbish, and and make sure that everybody's tucked in with a you know some kind of curfew so they can be back at it tomorrow and just keep the entire world folding over until it becomes a permanent blood clot or a blood blister that turns into a malignant see of some sort and benign in every respect and fail to understand the role or just the basically the synergy of law and order because just by doing it constantly it's like saying well can we tolerate it enough people that actually buy you know inner city skyscraper depart, uh, skyscraper apartments they, they buy inner city apartments they buy inner city real estate and they choose to live in it and some people actually work and live within their own hotels and pubs and they have every reason and right to as much as they live and breathe with inside their own restaurant you know to never see that kind of stuff happen on their front footpath as much as they pay rates to the council to expect people to get the fuck off their footpath and to not run amok controlling the masses because you can't control the numbers and that KPI weakness, that key performance indication that doesn't even see private, private business people like wine sippers versus forbidden fruit. You know, people saying forbidden fruit tastes sweeter, but in what sense that what the gods can digest wouldn't sour in the belly of a slave? To shun those purposes and shun the malice and all of the goddamn def defamatory, field work, uh, defamatory sentences that people are duped to induce it and believe that it tastes sweeter, it's no different than, than theft is a form, of, is like snobbery. It's no different than theft. It's like snobbery to yourself and it's theft to have it sort of happen. Mass productivity, like the trade tr commission's trade, be it objective cosmopolitan arianism, those modified sequences, coupling with fear and everything that requires security and stability, evidence and materialism all folded into one, faith in it, no way. The ratio of goddamn science, percentage ratio, but then what the hell fucking ratio, ratio, forget the percentage factor, it's all about people and power, and then power and percentage. 
then percentage be it the actual prejudice. And there are some good prejudices in this world and you have to, you have to preserve those prejudices. The same way the system was built and to only want to fight to never change it. Right? And then be it the goddamn predicament, like the predictor scale. Just the predicament itself, like every pr predictor, good predictors, as much as the, the, the scale of prediction. Not a blown predictor scale, it's like saying shit blown out of shit's creek is like not even knowing what it means to be blown out of shit's creek if your tyre is just punctured so much you can't fix the tube or the tyre. That's what it's like to know that a $55,000 vehicle isn't worth nothing but the $40 tubes in your tyre with air in it. Blown out of Shit's Creek estimates where the, like then, you know, predictor. Then the penalty, knowing there's penalties. Even penal colony. Even colonialism and colloquialism sort of meets the big, the big whopping challenge. You know, of, of, um, of, of whatever the case may be. Collectivity. Cool, calm, collected. And then, of course productivity like production to only get to that safe level and then what you've got to go through all that to ever say faith in all that you have to have faith every step of the way but once you purchase it like perch then you get your ground that's when you buy your foreground then you purchase it like the eighth notch the eighth factor people power percentage prejudice predicament, penalty, productivity, and once you go through all that to be on the safe side, then you purchase it, like your land and house, like your goddamn shop front, your, your business space, like even your park estimate, and even to purchase anything like, walk, you know, walk into a shop, purchase something. That's like your heart. That like, like faith, It's sort of resolved and you just sort of tolerate it. Rather than have to have faith that what you buy you don't have to take back. Or that when you purchase something you build your house upon it. Love's bigger than your whole house to say you want your whole house full of so much love that you never want to leave it. There should never be divorces, separations. That's a big asset in this world to ever take for granted the liability behind two people forging a document. To even take the courts and all the count and all those lamentated factors, even social social sympathy and, and emotional discontent and, and and guilt factors that see one separation, have one run to a million people tell the story and have one suffer with a goddamn dog and a hungover, you know, dog sickness from that they lost their. What do you think it is to say that a dog is a man's best friend? What would that make the woman then, bitch? It's like, you know. Guilt by association, association and opposed to innocence and beauty. Nothing more innocent than, no, nothing more beautiful than innocence itself. Purchase that factor and only know that like, hey, you wonder why God is a big question and why tolerances and faith sort of coincide with the way in which the world park break on the estimate of revolution only to find themselves in the same friggin' war again, never understand the revelation and the light, the bright side of what we know today, our kids know and we know, and yet we would have never known that until a time like this, to know what it is we're tackling, what it is to understand the precautionary measures and the steps at play, so that just like, rather than see it like a three-legged egg and spoon, race in a potato sack, face in a bloody magic mile, or few sheets, few sheets in the wind, a bloody two-pot screamer, or what it is to sort of be so docile and manageable that it even takes away your, your strength and security and your stability to stand on your own two feet and govern your own life so that every time you walk down the street or place provisions in front of you so that, like, have, have faith in that without even having to think about it, right? It validates you. It validates your space as much as it validates your continuity, not even your constituents should be able to break you. 
from a house that corrects it, corrects itself. You you have to be able to only be in subjection to a world or subjection to everything that happens and still live, even if it means through those changes that we that that we constantly scrutinise and, and and worry about would see us even at a time like this in the 21st century, constantly fight the con. Say you're a professional, but say at the same time you're an institution, how dare you damage my my institution, when you're probably no different than a goddamn prostitute, just sort of on the corner for everyone's inconvenience, asking people to be out of pocket to fuck you. Now, how the fuck does that make anyone a professional a prostitute or even a reputable institution to see even poor Korea, North Korea, be robbed like a typical bloody convenience store that kept telling everyone, hey, but he's come back and robbed the convenience store owner on the corner, on the peninsula. It might be a classic case like that and just like a rebellious free world showing up to want to steal from them. And you know that actually Koreans, and I'll say this truly openly, just, just for the sake of some, you know, totally left field highlighted factor in the world like this, the, the war, the Cold War again. Koreans are some of the most spiritually clean people on planet Earth, and this is before, during, and after even talking about it, with every second that ticks by having said it. They're not even religious, some of them. It's all resolved in their heart like that. It doesn't even... The body asks questions the head simply doesn't. So they wouldn't even understand religion, let alone friggin' atheism. It's just such a harmonious slash tranquility that some of those people live, you know, that they don't even, they're some of the most spiritually clean people. It hadn't been dirtied up or infected by that stuff, even if it meant through the ages they fought to even still have to fight not to change that. Or to wonder why, what it is to, you know, to understand why people, it wouldn't matter any people around the world, families included why they fight to safeguard the immunity of their civilization and safeguard the immunity of something so spiritually pure and sound that like a, a legal tender, like a, a tenable but yet plausible realm of commitment, the entire world gets built and revolved around it and to know where the creaks and the cracks and those little goddamn fractures have set in to the point where it just, it compromises the entire slate. That's a lot different than seeing sleet in a mosh pit at a rock concert. And commit, the, and, and call that sleet in a mosh pit at a rock concert that slate. That's pathetic contrast of, an, uh, of comparison. Because people worship. In this life, people tend to either worship someone or something. And the thing is, people actually do. You just want to be careful you don't sort of worship a god of stone, wood, and brick and gold. That will just be your house and land package, or your mortgage, or your jewelry. Basically, house, land, car, jewelry. Your jewelry in your cars, your jewelry in your girls, your house, your car, you slave your guts out to that. You worship that mortgage and slave your guts out to that like nothing else. Equality is like knowing that God is no different than someone you followed home and never left their house and you wonder why you followed them home. You know, there's nothing stronger in this world than the belief in people. So we'll end it like that, like faith, like tolerances. You know what it is to tolerate people through equality. But it is to have faith in people through equality to know that if, um, if sleep is the cousin of death, and dream is akin to your last breath, then homosexuality is the cousin of pedophilia. So talk about what? It's like there's nothing stronger than the belief in people because you can only believe in people and you must give people a chance knowing that if it doesn't directly involve people first physically and sexually, mentally, whatever, and doesn't damage or infringe their, their, their space, the, 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 the physical space or the, the parked, park, you know, the space, time, whatever the hell, right? 
then you have to allow people because it's free willing. It's it, it's open and free. It's like saying that when I say open, it might be a different way of putting it, but to, again, like omnipotent, superficial is another way of putting that in a great way. But like incumbent, if you're only supposed to be performing your civil right and duty in society, then you're only supposed to be lawfully abode, not damaging the brand of civil liberty. Civil conduct, that which only requires both first lawfully and abode citizens to upkeep the integrity and strength of 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 peace or basically life because you can be two great you can do, be two brothers and raise kids you can be two sisters and raise kids some kids will probably think that's bloody awesome as much as whatever but then you know I'm saying that if you can it, the, the greatest there's nothing stronger than the than the strength and the belief in people that's what it is that's why before you meet people. That's what it is before you meet people, knowing that God created you equal. You know, like before meeting someone, that's why if, if someone is your brother, some, you respect them. If you respect them and you know that you believe in people, like believe in your friend, believe in your sister, believe in a person, believe in a colleague, an associate, an affiliate. You believe in, in world leaders as much as you believe in the average person walking down the street, you even see with a hat. You say, that person's always a nice person. You know, or you can always, that the only person you can sometimes trust is a perfect stranger and sometimes it takes someone to be more concrete in integrity that isn't sort of intertwined and involved in everybody's area of smut and goddamn scrutiny at the same time spe speculation or goddamn, uh, you know, skepticism. As dubious and as daunting as that factor it can be, it can be no different than having to be scared and absolutely afraid of, of being a first-time parent. Then you wonder why, you know, that's why before you meet people, you know, God created us equal. Because when you went on to respect them and know that you respected them and they're your friend, that's why you believe in them. And that's what it is to be equal. That, that it's always liberty first. If you don't get liberty right, equality will never work. That if you fight for foreign land, you won't have a home to go to. It's like saying that if you fight for feminism, you'll never have a man to go back to. And you will never improve the equality of women and children, especially children, it wouldn't matter if they're boys or girls, by forever denigrating and playing on the fears of men, especially to women and children. So like equality, never underestimate the power in which prayer and supplication has in a world born into it with nothing, ultimately requires peace and restoration every step of the way. We need a world that constantly restores the goodness of antiquity and constantly restores things that require restoration, fixing. If it isn't bad enough of a case of political... Uh, existentialism the concrete manifest the concrete manifold of society is basically science because there's no science without math just like there isn't dollars without sense so you can't say that the opposite of love is is hate if you say i hate people that get in the way of my dreams well that's just that that's insidious to think that because you don't actually hate your dreams and goals you're going after so people play second fiddle to that. It's not even part of that. They're in your road. They're not obstructing. They're, they might be obstructing you, but you don't hate them. You actually love your dreams and goals, so you're basically apathetic. So the opposite of love would just be apathy. If you were just constantly going after that which you loved, it's like a great big discovery in life, like the biggest question you ever sought after to discover. And that's what it's like with God, and that's what it's like with equality at the same time. That's what it's like with faith. But all those sort of three things is contrary, if not sort of at pace, with what you ultimately need to 
prioritised, like a pro proprietary, like, like an established standard. You can knock on those opinions, but you can't knock on an op you can knock on those standards, but you can't knock on an opinion. You you can knock on wood, but you can't knock on an opinion. There's always standards. Can't have double mindedness, double standards. It's all right for me and my kids to practice, but it's not all right for people and other other kids to practice. That's like saying that there's only a, a specialist field where people are are just a historical. Uh, are, are an historical platform for reputation and decoration in opposed to others that basically become the chronological strength and concrete manifest slash manifold to all of the ingenuity at stake that ever sees at pace that standard like a goddamn car that works perfectly every time standard as fuck so that when you put the floor like Cock, you know, cock the hammer or pedal to the metal and punch that goddamn accelerator, that engine is purring, rev fucking wickedly, standard as fuck. Absolutely standard. You're hitting 190 clicks and it's just purring. You're not even hearing it. You don't even hear it. Faith in that vehicle. That uniqueness... Is like saying the uniqueness in 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 in, in uh, the in, in 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 our faith cannot be the same as knowing that righteousness is more original than sin, and that every child is as antiquitous as that before they entered the world without concept that the restoration factor was no different than protecting the uniqueness of their copyright, the uniqueness of their mortality rate, the uniqueness of their strength, the uniqueness of even heaven and earth that they, that they pioneer, the uniqueness of dignity and power, the uniqueness of harmony and tranquility, the uniqueness of wealth, ah, the uniqueness of friendship, the uniqueness of valour, and the uniqueness of trust. Even entrusting them, even the stealth capabilities. Say, sell one, sell a million. I say, for for people that do it for those that they don't know and don't owe, even if it be your constituents, you wonder why you're so dedicated, because you have no power. You wonder why you're so dedicated. Sell one, sell a million, for everyone that you don't know and don't owe. Because you have no power. It's a debt assessment even at an entrepreneurial level. Where faith in what? You don't have it. You can only tolerate it. To be in subjection to it, to all things, and still live, is to understand the uniqueness of peace and restoration, be it the uniqueness of tolerance, in opposed to faith and it's like that with never to just wrap it up and go back to the beginning where I said you can't ever say a child's independent if you only want a child to be able to be formally instructed you want a child only to be autonomous and a child to be omnipotent or omnipotent and a child to be incumbent because that's the way in which they formulate government and you expect it no different be it righteousness is more original than sin then don't make it so difficult for them to have faith in something they're forced to to make a contextualised effort to get the hell around it like staring at a stiff horse in the ass, only to ever look at a stiff horse in the mouth. Uh, look at look at a gift horse in the mouth, sorry. Don't make it so difficult that they're forced to make a contextualised effort to get around it like a stiff horse in the staring at a stiff horse in the ass. When they're constantly faced at looking at a gift horse in the mouth. Pathways are inevitable, but righteousness is more original than sin, and we can do with some god, some 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 goddamn better governments or or parliaments more tolerable of each other than just faith and hope that they're going to somehow continue to find congeniality in areas that still to this day 
spark and fuel the envy of all the goddamn vindictiveness and resentful people at, at, at power and prejudice. Because it's the same goddamn fuel and power envy that brings about vindication as a result. So you have to always be careful what you tread. You tread a pathway of consistency and never a pathway of uh, goddamn meningitis, you know? God, what the hell is meningococcal? Talk about the way in which, you know, remanding people in custody. The questioning before, let's say, the authorities, like those experts.